So, Super Bowl Sunday here. I uh, just got a call from Len Johnson. He's got a pretty cool Polaris type ride going on tomorrow. He invited me up for. So, got to do a little bit of scrambling here. Uh, we're kind of we're kind of packed in pretty tight. So, do some shock swappage on the Assault to the 650. Get Andy's fancy shocks back off the Assault onto the 650, or vice versa. With my hand pointing, it's all backwards uh yeah swap those shocks around so that the 650 is ready to go because i'm gonna take that thing and beat that thing around up there what else i gotta do swap the tunnel bag and then put in our usual clots and boost stain and load it in the trailer and be ready for the morning so getting out of here first thing headed up north to pittsburgh again not sure exactly where we're going or what the plan is but uh got the call to go ride so we're gonna go for it I forgot about the flap on the 650 again. With the long tail springs, it keeps the back up pretty high and it just throws tons of shrapnel out the back of it. It's miserable to follow, so I don't want anyone else really having to deal with that. I ordered a long flap from PDP, but until that shows up, I'm just adding a little extension to this one. I don't know how many of you followed the build on this and the videos I did on it, but I switched out instead of having rivets back here, I riv nutted this snow flap. So now it's just, you know, M6 by one bolts, which is awesome for a situation like this. I can just blast the flap off and add my little extension on the bench and not have to drill rivets and mess around. So, save myself, you know, 10 minutes of messing around with rivets. Starting out with just kind of a bare bones, basic little template off the bottom of that. Took the knife and you just slice all these little webs off. So that way, hopefully it kind of lays in here a little bit flatter. I'm just gonna drill holes and bolt it for now because I don't wanna put a ton of time into this when I have a different flap on the way. But trying to give you a little idea of what I'm doing to get by. Continuing on with the flap stuff here, loosely fit trim in here, hold it down, drill a hole, mark two holes, drill them in this, mark two holes on that, drill them in there. I'm gonna bolt this onto here, and then I'm gonna put another one in the middle and call it a day. Little extension jobber, ain't bad. It'll get the job done. Not too pretty, but it'll work. Not great, but it's not horrible. yesterday i'm on my way up to pittsburgh new hampshire again to ride with len he called me up said come on up here we got a cool ride going on so we're in route up there been on the road since like 6 30 ish this morning something around there gloomy overcast day nothing too exciting on the road happening here i forgot my chin mount contraption to mount the camera so i gotta make a new one luckily i keep a little kit with a bunch of pieces parts so hopefully i get the angle pretty much the same that's the way it goes, trying to get out of there early and whatnot. But on our way, probably an hour and a half left to go, I think. Yep, we'll see how it goes. Should be a good day, you know? It's, any day on the snow is better than a bad day in the shop or a good, bad day on snow, better than good in shop or something. <laughs> Oh, it is crispy out here. Wow. It is just like an ice rock in here. Good thing I brought the 650, not the Assault. I'd be overheating all day. It is very icy out here, very hard. I mean, it's kind of expected, you know, you get a weekend of 40, 50 degrees and then it drops right back off. Everything's gonna turn to ice. Might be a little bit better the more we climb up in elevation and whatnot. Look at the shrapnel coming out of this thing. Holy pecker. So I got my snow flap extension on there. I'm hoping that that helps with our temps as well as the uh, the shrapnel coming out of the back. We're 103 already, which is fine. We can stay around there all day. That'd be pretty good.
but this thing just eats all of this stuff. It's crazy. I do be wanting to run though. I am a peacock. I need to roam free. Let me roam, Linster. This thing's incredible. <laughs> they did not go out and groom. This trail is pretty smooth compared to the other one we were just on. That thing was rougher than a cob, but... We rode all this with my father not too long ago. It definitely took it hard. Ah! That mother effer, I just realized he got his own little fancy light in his helmet. Oh, uh, you, you know what, Leinster? Good on you, because that thing's sick. Oh, I just realized that. I'm so jealous. Whoa, these trees lost a ton. I'll flash in right now the footage from uh, legit two weeks ago. Was that two weeks already? Yeah, I think it was. Either way, I'll flash in the footage the last time we came up here. All these trees were just covered and packed right in. Wild. So, I've been up on this thing, this is the third time now. I thought this was a field, and I feel like an idiot because I know it's Stub Hill Pond, and I just thought there was a pond somewhere else nearby because every time I've come up, it's been completely covered in snow or at night. And I legitimately thought this was a field somehow that someone had cleared out. I did not realize that was a pond. So, um, yeah, that's a fun thing that I discovered. We're headed back out of here and Len is taking us down to Diamond Ridge now. Or up, over, over, around. I can hear every once in a while my little snow flap extension scrape the ground, which is kind of cool. I can also hear the stupid crossover shims rattling away on the ski shocks. I'm surprised that High Gear doesn't have one of their pro adjusters for these two inch Walker Evans yet. Where you don't have the shims to rattle around. Speaking of those uh, crossover shims rattling away, I am in contact with a fellow. I don't know if he wants to be named on here or not, but I am in contact and working with someone on a spring that I've got to try out sometime soon that I think may work pretty well for the majority of moderate to aggressive riders. So more on that in the future, but uh, nothing on it currently yet other than what I'm telling you right now.
a diamond ridge. So I believe we're headed south-ish uh, towards lunch, maybe? I don't really know. A little thinner in here, obviously down in elevation, but I don't know. I, allegedly there's more snow down this way, so uh, keep pecking along and see what we get. Like we could just drive through that hole right there. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. I think for the 650, actually here's a little point we could talk about. I think for the 650, the front shock, I can come down another click in the high speed. This, I just pulled these right off the assault, didn't touch a thing, bolted them right on, and I think this setting works really well on the assault boost with the, you know the extra weight of the turbo and all that i think on this i could take another click out of the high speed and be completely fine but like i come back to i really enjoy knowing that these things are going to take whatever i might miss in the snow dust or whatever so i'm just going to leave them alone and uh keep riding it like at speed like this they're absolutely perfect it's just when you're going a little bit slower, you feel a little bit of the chop a little more than I would like to, but it's not a huge deal. Because I know when we turn it up, they're going to be there. Boy, it is crispy down here. Our temp is up a little bit. Not bad. 119 is fine. It's pretty thin in here, and we're cooking right along, and kind of expected for this type of trail we're into right now but it had been pretty damn good 105 108 most of the morning i should not have ate 25 pigs in a blanket yesterday that was a bad idea there actually is snow out here it's like not super hard frozen there's actual snow this is nice. As always, I feel like I'm on a Miata. Or in a Miata, like chasing a Corvette here. Every corner I'm trying to like find a little route past them. Then the straightaways, they just edge out again. <laughs> it's okay, Wayne, I'll take the garbage route. Oh, I should have just, oh my lord. I thought he was getting bricked. Oh no! chunks dude they're incredible
fresh groomies right here. I did not expect to see groom today. Oh boy, it's looser than a goose. Come on, old girl, come on, old girl, let's go. Mattress. Love to see it. Oh shit. I should probably start it. There we go. So this battery died quite a while ago. We just stopped and I put a fresh one in. Not sure when it died, but we we're on some fresh groom stuff as you can see, and Len and I were tangoing pretty good. It was awesome. Super fun. It's a bummer to lose that footage, but it is what it is. So now we're uh, continuing on, headed south. Whoa! Goofy fresh groom with Len's big old trenches here. Um, anyway, we're headed south, go get some lunch. We kind of left the truck and did this kind of number up north around. We're going down and then we're going to kind of beeline back to the truck. So I've got about three and a half hours back home tonight. I think Len has two and a half or three, somewhere in that range. So we're trying to get back at a decent time so we can make our venture back home and not be, you know, 10 p.m. or whatever. But there is still snow out here. As you can see, this stuff is pretty good. It's not super hard frozen base like it was when we left this morning. This has been, I'm guessing by how it feels under me right now, the groomer is out right now. And we might run into them or find them or something because it's uh, got that inconsistent consistency to it where you don't really know exactly what it's going to do and then you drop into a trench some spot yeah you can see the color well, i can see it i don't know if the camera will pick it up but you can see some of the color changing where it's starting to set up in some spots where there's a lot of moisture in it there it is i'd almost forgotten what it was like to be out front in the fresh air There it is! My lord! I'm gonna give him some space. I don't really want to lose another $20 lens cover already. Dude, this little thing is awesome. That's what she said. I believe we're dropping into Errol. This is a nice little logging jobber. Damn, this is muddy, dude. There we go. That ain't bad. I mean, even though that right there looks kind of brown and snurdy, that's actually really smooth and nice through there. They've done a good job fixing that up. Ooh. Ooh, yuck. Nasty metal culvert sticking up right there. Be careful of that. Man, kudos to this groomer. You can see right there where they went and took everything they could from that little landing to fill this hill in. Good job, whatever club this is, you guys are doing a damn good job with what you got. So you go, you can see Errol Quarter 18 East. Whoa, what? Dang. That's crazy. Pull up, get some fuel, and then we're going to eat somewhere. And, uh, yes, sir. 
Where is he going? Finished up lunch in Errol, and we are headed back. I told Len, I said, take me the fastest way back, straight to the truck. As I rear end him right here, imagine, boom! Here's one for you guys, I'm gonna pull the audience here. Uh, should I engine swap this chassis to a different engine? I'm not gonna say what. Um, I have some options, well, I have a option that has been presented to me and I'm on the fence because this 650 runs so good and is so fun but at the same time I'm like yeah you know more power is always cool um, yeah would it be cool to see the 650 engine swapped with something bigger and uh, you know quote unquote better so if you think that's something that should be done to this chassis you know because I'm planning on keeping this thing for quite a while I just super happy with it i don't have any reason to uh not have it it does exactly what i want it to do and that's kind of the hard part too is that it does everything that i'm asking it to do all the time so yeah let me know if you think this would be awesome with a bigger power plant or if that would kind of ruin what this machine has been built and is intended for and kind of take away that 650 zing fun factor so I think on one hand it would be awesome and it would make for great content and it'd be cool to swap it and see how it all goes. On the other hand, I'm super happy with this thing as it is. So what does the audience think? Throw that in the comments down there. Let me know what you guys think. What a difference this like little bit of groomer pass through here made. Incredible. Speak of the devil. Props to these guys for doing what they can out here, man. We'd love to see that. About to get it right, come on! Ah. About to get it right, be a diddly, isn't it? I don't know how long ago they groomed this, but it is set up beautifully. This is awesome. This stuff is incredible right here. Aside from this ocean spray of whatever you want to call it coming out of the back of Len's hot rod. I'm really struggling with this. I don't know what to do. I love how zingy and fun this engine setup is. This whole sled is like the unit that it is right now. And I just don't know if I want to go and mess with that. Wow! It's like I've talked about before where I have this issue where I'm like, hey, this works incredibly well. Cool, let's go ahead and mess it all up and try something else. <sighs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Meow, 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 meow. Wow, rock. I have noticed today this thing runs way cleaner if it's at around 115, 120 degree coolant temp. 105, 100, it's not as responsive. Not that it's like a slug around there, but it's just not the same. Ah, I just can't ever pull on him. As soon as we get to a straight, it just stays right there. <laughs> That's why I love riding with Len, dude. My boy, let's go. like these that we've had today make all these rides together worth it man look, look at this thing look at him on the assault dude this shit's great
absolutely wild that that place is like abandoned and falling apart. Look at the size of it, dude. a cylinder or something we broke the plug so we left that intersection like 200 feet back there and this thing dropped a cylinder second br9 eya within two weeks this is from the same batch this one broke an insulator again so we, we uh we had another B ngk br9 eya fail insulator broke off we fixed that I fired it up and it's still running all rough. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? I guess maybe it did take out a hole or a wire, a coil or something. Um, forgot to hook the wire up. So <laughs> in our scramble to get the hood and everything back on. Tanner had a guys. blonde moment. Well. I've had those. Well, you know, yeah, see. You're, 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 you're in no position to tell. I'm not, because I just freaking went the through this. The thing about these engines is you got to have your wires on them. you got to really push them on, too. Oh, yeah. A lot better. If you, uh. If you don't have your wire on, you're only going to have one hole. Which, for some people, one hole's enough. Oh. Uh. Let's keep this family <laughs> oriented. All right, well. So you still think you can go drop them at the uh, cabin? Oh, heck yeah. Oh. Otherwise, we're going to drive through we're, that we're like for 40. another hour. Do you think they'll groom that tonight, Len? Oh, yeah. They're already out. They groomed. Remember this road? You didn't think they were going to groom? They oh, groomed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Wow. It lives. Easy fix. Yeah. I thought for a minute, I was like, well, I'm going to have to call Devin at Indy Specialties and say, get me. We're back at Lens Camp instead of going back to the trucks because that would have been another like 35 miles through a lot of rough, thin stuff. So we're like, all right, let's go shoot across the lake, come back to Lens. This thing's fine. Two plugs in it, hook the wire up actually, and not forget about that. We're good to go. So yeah, we're going to hop in a car. Go up, get the trucks and trailers. I'm going to throw this in, and then I'm going to beeline home because i got a pile of stuff to do tomorrow. 